Well, welcome back. We're uh, ready to get down to the details because we're nearing the home stretch. And I have a couple things laid out here. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to refinish a couple of pieces and take care of some common problems that you'll find on a bike that you're restoring. First off here, I've already refinished it, but here's the, the exhaust. Uh, I uh, stripped it. I uh, put a couple good coats of some uh, high quality, high temp, rust inhibiting primer, and then uh, some good coats of some high temp uh, black gloss black paint because this is uh, designed to be a gloss black uh, muffler. There's also a trim piece that will go on here and uh, I'll uh, shine that up later. Uh, next thing I have on the table here is uh, the skid plate and as you can see it's uh, pretty uh, pretty beat up. Uh, it's hit, hit some rocks in its day and pretty scratched up so we're gonna have to uh, put this back into shape I mean, obviously, if it's easy to just buy a new one, that'd be the best route. Um, on this bike here, there, there is no more new old stocks uh, that are easy to find. I mean, they do come up once in a while on eBay, and I could go that route. But uh, I'm going to try to salvage this one because it's even though it's beat up, I think I can fix it. Uh, I have two other bikes here, but they're in no better condition. Next thing here is we have a, uh, an ignition cover here. And I'll show you a little bit uh, more, but uh, we have a couple of little gouges and things in here that we've got to take care of. And same with uh, the carburetor co cover. This is a rotary valve engine, so this is the carburetor cover. And there's a few scratches and a little uh, ding here that we're going to show you how to fix. As I bring it in closer here, uh, I'll show you exactly what we got. Here's a little closer up uh, shot of the skid plate here. And of course you can see it's, it's uh, kind of beat up. We're going to take care of that and uh, this ignition cover. I've already done a little bit of prep work on this. As you can see, uh, there's, some, there's some light gouges in here. And what I did is I took, uh, in this case, I uh, experimented and took some 80 grit sandpaper and uh, just to knock down the uh, rough spots and the high spots uh, where, you know, this bike fell over and hit a rock or, or something like that or a stick came up. These, these old bikes, these uh, aluminum side covers, um, they're cast and they're, they're, they're kind of a cheap casting. They're easy to break uh, or gouge. I, I shouldn't say they're easy to break. They're just real soft so they're easy to uh, damage. And so what I've done is taken some uh, 80 grit sandpaper, just knocked down the, uh, the high spots here. And these gouges are, are very minor. They're, they're not very deep. Um, really the, the worst is maybe a sixteenth of an inch deep. So these will, uh, we're going to fill uh, spray and fill these with some high build uh, primer and uh, do some sanding steps in between and uh, make this thing come out all nice and smooth. Now, this is designed to be uh, painted. The, the original finish is is a painted look, as you can tell. Compare it next to the carburetor cover. I mean, obviously there's normal wear and tear. It's worn off on the edges here. That's that's normal here. Wear your boot uh, sometimes rubs, but um, you know if this was uh, this, something on a bike that needed to be polished, uh, it'd be almost impossible probably to, uh, to save this because of these gouges, but because it's, it's going to be painted, painted uh, we can actually hide that with uh, filling it with some high build primer. Looking closer at our carburetor cover, as you can see, the, the original painted finish uh, is worn and, and scratched. And these light scratches we're going to be able to take out with our 80 grit sandpaper just to, to knock these down. I Maybe we'll go back with maybe 120 or something. Uh, see, it's, it's going to be an experiment uh, to see how this might work. Wipe some of that sanding dust off and if I feel across that, just that little bit I did there kind of just smoothed it up. So we'll be able to use a high belt primer to fill those. Um, but this part is the, is the part that I'm going to experiment with a technique that uh, I just kind of thought of is uh, a lot of, a lot of off-road guys have probably seen this stuff um, it's from MSR. It's called Quick Aluminum. They also have Quick Steel and what it is is a, uh, it's a stick of basically uh, like a paste. It's a two-part. As you can see there's a black, an A and a B, a silver and then the black part's the B. You break off or cut off whatever you need, knead it until it's uniform cover, and then you can patch, you know, broken case 
and uh, and then get you get you down along the trail or get you back to your pickup. Well, what I'm going to try and do, and I don't know if this is going to work honestly, but I'm going to do the same thing and and use it like a body filler. Now, because this is an engine cover, and even though this is uh, the carburetor cover, it's not going to get real hot because it's isolated away from the main heat of the engine. It is going to get warm, and I don't know if say a standard you know body filler could stand to the temperature so I'm going to try this technique and what we're going to do is we're going to mix up and daub it on here and try to mimic as best we can before this hardens uh, th this shape here and then afterwards we can probably this is uh, likely sandable we can uh, take some uh, sandpaper and maybe uh, form it and then once we hit it with some primer and paint hopefully you'll never even know that it was damaged now a lot of people would say, well, you got three other bikes, don't, don't you have a replacement cover? And uh, yes, I do. However, the, this bike is one of the early, early models by the frame number and by the engine number. Actually, the build date was uh, February of 1970. So this is one of the early ones and this is slightly different from the other later models, even the later 1970 models. So this is actually a pretty rare, uh, rare bike and rare cover, and so I don't really want to just replace it with maybe one that's uh, and the new old stocks of this early style are almost non-existent because Kawasaki mid-year made an update to this cover, and it's mainly how this this is the opening for how the carburetor cables go down into the carburetor, and the later ones have some drill and tap holes to put a uh, chrome trim piece that sandwiches the gasket, whereas, whereas the gasket just just kind of sits in there and, uh, and doesn't provide as good a seal as the later covers. So um, where we're trying to do as factory correct as possible on this bike, I want to save this cover if at all is possible. And I think I can do it, so let's get started. Okay, I've cut off my piece that I think is going to be enough, and uh, all you got to do is you sit here and you just knead it together, the black and the gray, until it becomes a uniform color. You don't see specks of gray or specks of black, and it should turn really like a dark gray once, uh, once we get it properly mixed. If you don't get it properly mixed, this, this stuff will never cure, so it's, it's like a two-part epoxy. And there is a slight uh, endothermic reaction. It, it will get a little warm on you. It's not going to burn you or anything. Um, it does have an, a slight odor to it. And uh, a lot of you are saying, oh, shouldn't you have some gloves on? Well, I've tried gloves and this stuff just sticks to it. So um, I've never, you might want to be careful if you're, if you're real, got real sensitive skin. I mean, maybe you might not be able to do this, but uh, I, had no trouble with the stuff. There's no warning label really that says not to do this and that's just how most people are going to do it. So, just about ready here. I uh, I really like this stuff. I mean, you, you should carry a stick with you because, I mean, you won't use it all that much, but, uh, and it doesn't go bad um, as long as you keep it all covered up. But it really works great. I've, uh, I've actually used it as for an emergency trail repair. And, uh, okay, I got plenty of it here. So I'm gonna rip a little of that off. And, uh, okay, I'm gonna use a little razor blade kind of to just sort of uh, form it. I mean, this is not exactly what this is. This product is designed to do, but uh, since we're going to be able to paint over this, I'm using it kind of as a filler. As long as I can get the rough shape, I'll be able to um, come back with uh, some abrasive and, uh, and kind of form it down. And with the high build primer, should be able to just hide this. It'll take a couple coats, and this stuff takes, oh, I don't know, I forget what the directions say, but it's it's at least about an hour to, you know, fully, fully cure. In about 20 minutes, it, it's it's pretty hard. But uh, 
I'm gonna wait probably 24 hours before I actually try to do anything with it. And, uh, and of course, uh, before I tried any type of coating. But uh, this is an experimental technique that I'm trying with, trying. And, you know, honestly, I'm not sure if it'll work, but, but really, while it's still malleable, it's actually looking pretty good. I mean, it may not look like it on the camera because it's such a contrast from light and dark, but actually, uh, it's working pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, while we're letting our uh, little aluminum patch work, uh, or aluminum body filler, however you want to look at that, uh, cure and harden before I can uh, go back and uh, see if that's going to work for me, uh, we're going to uh, do a little painting on this. As I showed you before, I took a little lady grit to just take out the rough spots and some of these uh, minor gouges. And they really are, they're really just kind of minor. You can, I mean, you can see them and you can feel them, but they're not, they're not deep. So we're going to just uh, use a rattle can of this uh, sandable high build primer. Uh, you can find this at most hardware stores, auto parts stores. And, uh, you know, for small parts like this, it really makes sense. It's easier, more cost effective than uh, even if you had a paint booth and a spray gun just to do these little parts. It's just easier to do this because you're going to, uh, we're going to spray a couple coats, let it cure properly, and we're going to sand it down, put another couple coats on, sand it down, and, and repeat until we get uh, this completely smooth and you can't see these uh, minor gouges. So let's get started. All right, well, our little, uh, our little uh, aluminum patch fix uh, slash uh, bondo, <laughs> not really, but uh, worked pretty good. Um, before it fully cured, I uh, took my razor blade and I could, was able to scrape away the excess. And then once it fully cured, I was able to, starting with my a little piece of 80 grit, uh, take it down roughly to where it needs to be. Then I went to a, uh, little piece of 320. Uh, I, I happen to use a silicon carbide on a film back backing. Uh, these are just a sanding disc, old sanding disc I had laying around. So I just cut them up for some finger sanding and just uh, took that down, kind of feather in the edges. Then I went to a 600 grit and uh, did the same. And then uh, finishing up with a uh, 1500, took out all that, shined it up really good. Of course, you know, you can uh, see where my patch is because of the difference in color. But if you feel it, it feels just like the edge over here, which is perfect. And this is where that big old gouge was. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It, uh, it uh, turned out really well. And after we uh, throw some primer on here and uh, clean up these scratches and then uh, put the finish coat on of the aluminum color, uh, replicating the original finish, uh, you're not even hardly going to know that that was ever there. Okay, now that we got some of that uh, taken care of, we're going to work a little bit on this skid plate. This is something that's going to be common, and we're going to have to do some more body work a little bit uh, later on uh, on some of the fenders and such, and I'll get to that that type of techniques. But uh, this is going to be pretty easy. Uh, you know, brute force, uh, use a hammer. It's what a ball peen hammer actually is for, it's more for body work. Uh, that's what the rounded end kind of is for. But there are body tools, you know. Use what you have around. Um, use a block of wood, and then, uh, you know, metal wants to kind of go back to its own shape, and, you know, you can kind of tell how it needs to be. I can tell this, you know, I can maybe even bend that with my hands. I'll probably put that in a vise and bend that. And I get it, I'm going to get it, try to get this uh, as close as possible, you know. Might not be able to get it 100% perfect. But it's going to be on the bottom of the motorcycle, so you might not see it. But, you know, it's just putting it on like this, it'll definitely show that, oh, you know, I didn't do anything with this. So, all it takes is a lot of patience and different techniques. I mean, I'm going to start on a block of wood like this. I might have to move it like that. I might have to go down on the concrete. Uh, use different, uh, just whatever you got around to try and uh, get this hammered uh, back into shape. And so we're going to make a lot of noise here. 
Well, we're back to this piece here. And I put a good coat of primer on there, not too heavy. We don't want any runs because runs just mean you have to sand them out. Um, it filled in a lot of those minor scratches. I can still see a couple of gouges here, which uh, with first coat, I didn't expect to cover those. Because what I'm going to do is after this fully cures, it's not cured yet, I'm going to take some uh, probably 120 grit uh, and uh, sand over the areas that I can feel uh, have the low spots, sand them down. I'm going to hit it up with some more coats of primer. Let that dry fully, then sand that down and uh, and keep checking it if and I'm going to keep doing that process until I uh, fill in all my little low spots which there's just one two three four and a small five over there so really four or five little places that I got to really work with otherwise the rest of it covered up really good and then after we get that all done then we can put our finish coat on I have our good uh, coat of primer on there, not too heavy, I don't want any runs because uh, that's the last thing you want to do is put any runs uh, in here that you eventually have to uh, then sand out. But uh, you know, just with this first coat of primer, it looks pretty good. I'm going to let this uh, fully cure before I start sanding, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it down over the areas where all my uh, little scratches were. Hey kitty, you're in my shot. <laughs> 